All right, welcome everybody. Ooh, a little bit loud. Um, I'm uh, going to take a little bit of time to go through something that was announced today, which is Google Compute Engine. Uh, during the keynote, Urs uh, introduced our new infrastructure as a service uh, product to the Google Cloud Platform. I'm going to take a few minutes uh, to elaborate on some of the stuff he shared with you. He showed how Google Compute Engine has been used uh, by the Institute for Systems Biology to take a life-saving uh, uh, cancer research process and move it from something that took hours to minutes to seconds. I'm now going to take a little bit of time to share with you how Google Compute Engine can offer you that same set of capabilities, how you can tackle some really big computing problems on Google's infrastructure. And during the session, I'm going to provide a very broad brushstroke sense of what we've been up to so you understand what the product looks like. I'm going to uh, invite some of our partners up on stage to share some of their experiences and, and, and the technologies that they're offering. And I'm also uh, going to um, give you some demos so you can actually see the product in action. So let's jump right in. Google Compute Engine is infrastructure as a service. So when describing this product, I think the logical place to start is with Google's infrastructure. Now, as you know, Google runs some very big internet scale businesses. And to be successful in these big businesses, uh, we need really large infrastructure. The process of you know, running search, for instance, we index every day billions and billions of web pages. Um, our caffeine index is over 100 million gigabytes. It's huge. Uh, and we're able to provide results within a quarter of a second to, to those search queries. To do that requires some very interesting infrastructure. To be successful as a business, it's not just about the size of the infrastructure, the performance of the infrastructure, the scale of the infrastructure. It's also about the efficiency of the infrastructure. And the efficiency to us is important for two reasons. You know, one is environmental impact, obviously. Uh, we're very green by nature, and our data centers actually consume only about half the energy of traditional data centers. But it also translates into money, and it means more profitability for the business. So we have spent a tremendous amount of time and effort innovating relentlessly, you know, focusing on bringing new capabilities to market uh, and, and new, new, in, new technologies to market for ourselves. And we've also focused on refinement of every process in our data centers, whether it's the design of the hardware down to the silicon, whether it's our software, and we've brought some really neat and interesting technologies to fuse together commodity hardware and provide very high quality of service offerings on top of it, to our data center design, whether it's dealing with cooling, whether it's dealing with power distribution, uh, or to our operations, uh, rolling out new infrastructure, doing that efficiently, dealing with the life cycle of our hardware, recycling it. So we've relentlessly refined across this. And what we've brought together is this incredible power, this incredible scale, and incredible efficiency. And now you can access that and run your processes on our infrastructure. So what is Google Compute Engine? At its heart, it's infrastructure as a service. Infrastructure as a service starts with compute. We provide Linux virtual machines that you can rent by the hour on demand. You can configure them the way you want, and you can run traditional workloads as if it was running in your data center. It's about storage. It's about providing options for storage, which emulate local disk, whether that's a durably replicated, reliable, highly performant off-instance storage, uh, or whether it's having access to large local storage uh, for um, data-centric applications where you need um, access to large, efficient local storage, to our internet scale cloud storage offering, uh, which provides uh, the ability to create uh, shared content in, in, a, in, a, in a cloud scale or internet scale object store. It's about network, being able to take these virtual machines and expose them to the network uh, so that you can access them, and to do that in such a way that you have flexible control over who can speak to them, who can see them uh, using flexible firewalls. And it's also about being able to fuse these virtual machines together to form very powerful compute clusters so you can tackle large-scale data processing problems the same way Google does. And then, of course, it's about the tools. You need to be able to command and configure and control these, these virtual machines. And so we provided a portfolio of tools options so that you can jump in there and configure them exactly the way you want with a low-level command line tool, or you can access them and, and, act, and get easy access using a simple UI tool. And we will spend some time uh, jumping into these tools and, and explaining the, the, the service to you more. And so, yeah. Actually, hang on. Uh, what I'd like to do is invite Chris up. 
And I think the easiest way to really understand the product is just to see it. Uh, that will, will really give you a sense of what exactly this is. So Chris will do a little demo for us. All right, let's flip these guys. There we go. All right, thanks, Craig. Um, I'll be giving a brief tour of our UI today, um, showing you around a virtual machine instance. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive right in. We can look in the, uh, the Google Developer APIs site is where our UI is located. Uh, we have our compute nodes here in the form of virtual machine instances. Uh, I only have a single instance running right now. Um, we can look at our durable storage in the form of persistent disks that we list here. Again, just a single uh, example. And then our, our globally available networks, uh, and right now I just have my, my default network uh, defined here. We also have our, uh, our resource zones and a, uh, a list of operations used for um, uh, auditing what actions have been taken on your resources. Uh, we'll get into those in some later talks. So all these are bundled together in a Google Developer project. Uh, and so here in the overview pane, uh, we can see that my project is provisioned for 20,000 instances, uh, 20,000 CPUs, et cetera. So let's go ahead and start an instance. All right, I like fractals, so we'll name this guy Mandelbrot. And I'm gonna boot this with an Ubuntu image that has some fractal tools baked into it, which I created just before this talk. I'm also gonna turn on a service account this enables seamless authentication to other cloud services that we have without you needing to manage keys, push keys into your VMs, anything like that. So we'll go ahead and, and get that guy uh, started. Um, so while that's spinning up, uh, it's worth noting that our UI is actually an app engine application. Uh, making calls against Compute Engine's public REST API. There's no backdoors uh, <clears throat> in use here. Um, we'll be open sourcing this UI to you, so you'll be able to use it as the basis uh, for uh, specialized uh, platforms or uh, more sophisticated uh, UIs. Uh, in addition to this, I'll uh, show you a brief look at our command line tool written in Python. Uh, we'll be open sourcing that tool as well. All right, so we're up and running now. I've got a SSH command line here I can paste in. And here we go, I'm in my VM. Uh, so we can poke around here, see all the running processes. Uh, we can see what uh, kind of kernel we're running on. We can check out the CPU that's in here. So a full Linux virtual machine available for you to use very quickly, very easily. I'm gonna go ahead and have this instance do a little bit of work for me. Uh, so he's gonna generate a series of image tiles for a fractal. And you can see here that uh, we're uploading these to Google Cloud Storage using that seamless service account. Uh, and then as those tiles hit Google Cloud Storage, I have a local server uh, picking them up and displaying them here in a pretty basic web UI. So pretty, pretty quick and easy. Thanks, Chris. So as you see, we have put together a very simple Linux virtual machine as a service offering. This is infrastructure as a service as you'd expect it to be. And I'd like to sort of contextualize a little bit and, and, and help you think about how we, we are, what we're focused on, what the, what the, the value proposition of this, of this is from our perspective. It comes down to this. Um, you know, single you know, Linux machines, uh, virtual machines are great. Um, but what we do at Google is we throw a lot of infrastructure at problems. So we've developed a set of technologies and we've derived a tremendous amount of benefit from having very large amounts of accessible, affordable infrastructure that we can throw at large-scale computing problems. And in many ways, that's you know, one of the toughest challenges we have to face. It's like, how do we build a service like this that can really scale, and so that it enables you to tackle problems the same way we tackle problems on the same infrastructure that we use. So this first version of, of Google Compute Engine, this initial offering, is really focused on large-scale compute problems, helping you solve these, these large-scale data processing problems. And for us, that means scalability. That means being able to stand up these virtual machine instances quickly so that you can quickly bring up one of these clusters, do your work, and then turn it down when you're done with it. And it also means being able to perform effectively. It's not just about performing fast in a straight line. Uh, we actually have some pretty cool to uh, toys that Urus has built us over the last decade 
And it's pretty easy to go fast singly on, these, you know, on this kind of infrastructure. We've already focused on being able to do this at scale, being able to perform better the bigger and bigger the cluster is. And so that's some of the things that's really unique about this technology. And then, of course, it's about affordability. If you're buying a large amount of virtual machines, if you're buying a lot of, of CPU, you want to be able to do that affordably. And we really think about this as a utility. You should be able to plug into this thing, consume as much resource as you want, just like utility, be able to get that resource affordably, just like you do from a traditional utility company, because that utility company is able to deliver it at, at scale and at, achieve very high efficiencies at scale. And so that's what Google Compute Engine is about. It's about bringing these three things together, scale, performance, at scale, and affordability. All right, well, I think to really understand the service, it makes sense to step back and describe some of the guiding principles. These are the architectural principles that we used to steer our design and steer every decision we've made in delivering the service. And I think it's useful for two reasons. One is it'll help you understand the service better, but it will also help you understand where the service is going because these principles are still in effect. These principles are, are driving our day-to-day -day decisions today and they will continue to drive them in the future. And we believe that these guiding principles are very effectively manifest in the service. And as you get a chance to play with it, as you get a chance to use it, you'll experience it for yourself. And our first guiding principle here, the thing that trumps everything, is security. We recognize that your data is your business. And to win your custom, to win your trust, we have to treat that data with a tremendous amount of respect, and we have to create very strong controls to ensure the security of your data and to ensure the privacy of your users. And so at every stage of the game, we focused on delivering strong security controls. A couple of examples of this are our network. Any data that transits between virtual machines, whether they're sitting on the same rack right next to each other, or whether they're going thousands of miles um, across regions, runs on Google's global private network. It's secure, there's very high levels of encapsulation that we've applied to ensure that no one can intercept those packets or to, to try to attempt to assure that no one can intercept those packets uh, and, and drive the security of the system. Uh, we also encrypt all data at rest. This is really important. Uh, our customers have asked for this, our customers demand it, and so we've provided it. So any, any data that's written to our block devices, whether it's our PIS system block device or our local uh, disk, is encrypted at rest. And because we're doing that, we're able to do that very efficiently, so you don't see noticeable performance impact um, of, of, that, uh, of that control. The next criteria that we focused on is, 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 is tremendously important. And this is a little bit nuanced, but it actually has, has steered us and is, is probably one of the most impactful things we've already focused on. And that's the idea of consistency. When you're building real world solutions, it pays to be operating in a consistent environment. Traditionally, you have to design for the worst case scenario. Sometimes you don't even know what that's gonna be. If you're operating in an unstable environment, you have to design and controls to deal with you know, rapid auto scaling and it adds a lot of degrees of feed, uh, freedom to the solution. And so at every stage of the game, we focus on creating a consistent environment. Our target here is not a massively multi-tenant cloud. That's not what we're trying to deliver. Our target here is to deliver an experience, an environment that feels like your own data center. That's the class of consistency that we're trying to achieve. And to support this, you know, one of the things we've been very sort of concerned about as, as we've seen what's been happening in the cloud is the movement away from the separation of storage and compute. Uh, we've seen 20 years of SAN development where enterprises have moved to a world where they're able to effectively decouple these two things, and it creates a great degree of control and flexibility for them. Uh, it, it made us a little bit sad when we observed that people were moving to a world where compute was getting pushed back into, uh, sorry, storage was getting pushed back into the compute container because the storage block devices were just not able to achieve the performance and the consistency of performance necessary to meet enterprise level SLAs. So that's one of the things we've focused on significantly and we've, we've paid a tremendous amount of attention to is creating a persistent block device that offers better characteristics in terms of performance, better characteristics in terms of throughput than writing to our local block device on disk. Uh, that, and that's really important to us. The next principle, uh, and this, this is kind of you know, obvious to us, and it's, it's really state our decision, is we have to be open. We have to be flexible. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of code that exists out there. People have invested you know, probably trillions of dollars in developing code. It makes sense for them to be able to take that code and run it in our data centers on this awesome infrastructure. And the open source community is just this incredible source of innovation. It's a, a tremendously innovative space. We think our customers should be able to take whatever the open source community is producing and be able to run it 
on our infrastructure and achieve the benefits of what we're doing. So we focused on creating an open ecosystem. We've also focused on things like an open API. As Chris mentioned, our tools are all built on an open API. Uh, we don't have any backdoors, there's no cheating. You can get in there and you can extend our, our stack at any level. And we really like the idea of being able to plug into our stack at any level. And uh, it's also about the ecosystem. Uh, our goal is to deliver beautiful, pure, high performance, affordable infrastructure. And we really want to create a, a vibrant, strong partner ecosystem that can deliver great experiences when managing this and, and great experiences uh, for our users when they want to uh, move workloads around. And then it's about being proven. And being proven to us means one thing, really. This has to be a technology that we're willing to bet our own business on. So as we've gone, and, and you know, it's still early days for us with this, with this stack. You know, we, we're, we're just bringing it into, into the market now with this, this initial offering. But we are running Google businesses on this technology today. So it's one technology for internal businesses, and it's one technology for the outside business, and it's the same technology. Uh, one example of this is Invite Media. Uh, or has mentioned it today, and we're very lucky to have Hamza who'll be talking in a later tech session about their experiences when moving to uh, this, ta this, this technology stack. But long story short, they've had a great experience. Uh, they've been able to benefit from the power, the consistent power of the, of the platform. They've been able to reduce the number of cores they needed to actually run their workload by half uh, you know, for similarly configured instances. And they've also been able to benefit from the consistency of experience. Uh, where some of the variants that, that resulted in, in sort of errors in, uh, in, in bidding in their case uh, just went away because of this much more uh, robust, consistent platform than what they'd had previously uh, building in another uh, cloud, another multi-tenant cloud environment. So I mentioned this when I was talking a little bit about being open, and it's, it's worth just really calling out to our, our partner ecosystem. Again, we're focused on, on pure, beautiful infrastructure. Uh, we're not going to do all of everything, uh, certainly not coming out of the gate. And so being able to tap into the power of the ecosystem, being able to work with partners that complete it, that create the best set of experiences around managing, rich experiences managing, and support the mobility of workloads between uh, on-premises in the cloud and between clouds as well. Uh, we believe very strongly that you should be able to pick the cloud that makes sense based on the merits of the core technology. Uh, we're very, uh, we, we feel that very strongly. And so we've worked hard to find um, a set of partners that share those values and, and, uh, and are, are able to support that, that mission. And ultimately for us, it really comes down to this. We're going to deliver you a set of servers that you can configure and run any way you want. We recognize that it makes sense for you to be, you know, you probably want to think about this in terms of services, not servers. And so this ecosystem is really going to enable that and support that idea. So what I'd like to do now is invite... Uh, Michael Crandall, the uh, CEO of uh, RightScale on stage. Here you go, Michael. Chris, thank you very much. It, wow, it is really great to be here at the launch of Google Compute Engine, uh, and on behalf of RightScale to announce our support for that. We do have a live demo for you today, but before we launch into that, a, a word about RightScale. RightScale pioneered the whole category of cloud management. And our vision since we got started five years ago was really to open up this new world of cloud services to everyone by making it easier and more efficient and more reliable to run your apps and workloads on low-level cloud infrastructure resources. So compute, storage, and networking resources across a variety of, of different providers. And we do this by offering a web-based, pretty broad cloud management platform that encompasses everything from automation to configuration to monitoring, user management, uh, and so on and so forth, that really acts as an environment that's a bridge between your apps and workloads and the low-level infrastructures, whether they're public clouds or private clouds or hybrid clouds, uh, that you want to run them on. And so. Over those five years, we've gained a lot of experience. We've had lots of customers, a lot of traction. We've, on behalf of our customers, launched more than four million servers in the cloud. Uh, we've also powered some of the biggest scaling events that have occurred. Uh, and then finally, we've enabled large migrations from one cloud infrastructure 
to another in excess of 20,000 uh, different servers. I'd like to highlight what we think is, is really special about Google Compute Engine, and specifically three things that, are, that we believe are our differentiators. The first one has to do with the global private network that Google is offering, right? I think we've all known for some time that Google's infrastructure is a key part of the secret sauce uh, of the company, and it's pretty amazing that they're actually opening that up to all of us to access and to use on an as-you-go basis. Uh, but this global private network, which is part of it, really enables global deployment uh, in a much more easier fashion. You've got basically what looks like a private network spanning the globe, and specifically it makes uh, replication and disaster recovery failure isolation strategies uh, much, much easier. Second big point I wanted to emphasize is fast boot times. Why does that matter? Well, it obviously matters in terms of auto-scaling, when you need to scale up quickly. The faster that servers boot, the faster you auto-scale. But also in terms of day-to-day -day, uh, build up and tear down of environments that we all use in the dev test production life cycle. And we've consistently seen times, uh, boot times of two minutes, very consistent, as Craig mentioned, across the board, loading from cloud storage. Third area that I'd like to emphasize is harking back to the point about security, encrypting data at rest. So we all know that security is probably the top item on the minds of larger companies, but really it should be for all of us uh, as a requirement for using cloud. And because data is encrypted on uh, at rest on storage to whether local volumes or network attached storage. Uh, it couldn't be much simpler or easier, and there's virtually no impact on the performance. So very excited about that. There are three things I wanted to emphasize from RightScale's point of view that are core principles about operating in the cloud that we've embraced as a company since we got started. And I'd like you to keep these in mind as we get into the demo in a second here. The first one is what we call usable stuff. And what we mean by that is that you as developers and users should have access to cloud-ready components that you can get off the shelf, so to speak, customize if you like, but put to work very quickly. Uh, whether those are at a script level, a recipe level, a server template level, or deployments of many, many servers, you should be able to just pick from a library, if you will, and utilize them quickly. What comes out of that is automation. We really believe automation is probably the key core principle behind all of this cloud revolution. And it stems from the, you know, the famous concept of auto-scaling all the way through to the notion of launching complex multi-server deployments that know how to configure themselves as they come up. And then finally, what we call workload liberation. And what we mean by that is simply, you should have freedom of choice to run your apps and workloads on whatever cloud resource pool you choose to based on your set of requirements. So those are three key principles to keep in mind as we launch into the demo. And with that, I'd like to invite my colleague Siobhan up, and uh, we'll get right into it. Siobhan, can you tell us what we have to, to see today as a live demo? Yes, thank you, Michael. So we have a customer's typical uh, tra video transcoding application that we're going to walk through. And this slide here just kind of talks about the architecture of this application. We're talking about taking video files from the web, creating transcoding jobs that are then placed onto a queue, and then having a multitude of consumer servers taking those jobs, downloading the videos, transcoding them, and then placing them for, for retrieval from uh, Google Storage. So they're actually uh, s sending those, uh, those video files to Google Storage. Let's see what that looks like in RightScale. Here, here I have the RightScale system. And this is that single pane of glass, Michael, that you talked about where you're managing your cloud uh, resources. So we're talking about compute, networking, and storage. Here we have in the clouds menu Google Compute Engine connected to RightScale. So I've provided my credentials and made, this, uh, re made the resources that Google makes available, available here in RightScale. And that's really where RightScale starts in terms of the cloud management and automation capabilities we offer. 
So can you show us that automation at work in the actual app? So with any application, you have a variety of servers that comprise that application. And here what we're looking at is the set of all servers for this application. We've got three different server types, but really a multitude of servers. In right scale, that is sort of displayed as a deployment, so it's a collection of servers for the use case here of your application. Three different types of servers, as I mentioned. We've got that, um, that producer who's creating all the jobs. We've got the queue server that's holding all of the jobs, and then we've got the consumers down here that are running all the jobs and, and doing all the transcoding. Each of these types of servers are running on top of what's called a server template within RightScale. A server template is considered a blueprint of how your servers will reliably and consistently be launched every single time in the cloud so that they are coming up with the same state, with the same configuration, so that things are actually usable. And to really understand how we're operating here at scale, I've got about 325 odd servers that are running um, this workload. And here you'll see with RightScale's built-in monitoring the, uh, the capability that that compute power provides. So each of these graphs is a single CPU from the servers that we're looking at. Um, and the blue here shows the actual uh, load on these CPUs for doing the video transcoding. So Michael, here you have at scale an application running on Google Compute Engine managed via right scale. So cool. And by the way, audiences normally applaud at this juncture. <laughs> Thank you. It's very, very exciting to us, so thanks for your forbearance. What else do we have to show? Any application is living and breathing. This is one example of how you might transcode some video, but what happens if you have new sources of video that you need to start transcoding? How quickly can you reuse this environment for a new um, use case or new uh, uh, instantiation of the same application? Well, with RightScale, it's fairly simple. I'm going to take what we call the deployment, the collection of servers, and clone it. By cloning it, I'm taking the configurations that we had and making them available for, for configuration in the new case or the new instance. And what I'm going to do with just a few clicks is I'm going to start launching that entire, uh, in that entire uh, deployment of servers so that they're available to start doing these jobs again. What I've just done is I've enabled my, what RightScale calls a server array, um, which has all of those workers now starting to launch. And now I'm just going to go ahead and launch up the queue and video uh, uh, producer or the, the server that's going to create all these jobs. Um, I'm going to launch that as well. And what you're going to see, if I actually clicked it, it, it does look like it's clicked. So what, what actually happens now is you'll see these servers come up. And as this comes up, it'll take a few minutes to actually happen. But um, from my perspective as a user, that's all the interaction I need with RightScale. You'll see they're already in pending state. And now, again, Michael, these 325 servers plus these other two servers that are doing a lot of the command and control stuff all launched through RightScale. Thank you. And on the left-hand side there, you can see in the events window the activity starting to, starting to propagate. Well, you know, behind every demo, there's usually a little bit of an interesting story. Could you tell us the backstory of what really happened to put this together? Two things that I'd like to point out. One is, as with any demo, um, you know, we were building this demo out as we were completing our integration with Google Compute Engine. And so, funny story, we built this application on another cloud. But with RightScale's technology of server templates and the configuration management that we bring to the table, it was fairly simple for us to take that application and launch it on Google Compute Engine. And it really just worked, which was really very fascinating and, and uh, exciting. The second point is, you know, we didn't have a lot of time. So when we built the application to do the video transcoding, we wanted to keep things simple. We started with using only one core, making things very streamlined in terms of one video per, um, per job. And so what that meant was uh, we ended up launching a whole ton of instances or virtual machines on Google Compute Engine to do all of the work for us and keep the application layer very simple. So make sense, make the infrastructure do the work, not the developers. It probably resonates with some of you out there, that idea. So just to prove the point and show that we're doing something real, can you show us some of the output that came out of the transcoder? So here I have Google Storage, um, Google Cloud Storage. This is the storage browser that's available um, by Google. And anybody who has a project uh, and access to Google Cloud can see this. This is one of the videos that we've, um, that we've transcoded. And well, 
we can play it really quickly, but what I wanted to highlight is, is that we saw some really great performance in terms of the communication between uh, Google Compute Engine virtual machines and Google Storage. And, you know, just very low latent, uh, ver low latent uh, connectivity and very high bandwidth. So it was very, uh, very quick. And uh, to play this video, let's see if I can, I can full screen it here. When we started working with uh, the team at Google, it was very clear from the very beginning that this is an all-out effort. This is serious. This is worldwide. This leverage is the full depth of Google engineering. Cool. There you have it. That's the video. And that, by the way, is our, our CTO and co-founder, Torsten, if you wave your hand. We're all around uh, through Friday. We have a sandbox here. We also have our private beta of support for Compute Engine at rightscale.com slash Google. Very much looking forward to partnering. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, Michael. So it's wonderful that you can deploy such large, complex services with a click of a button. Absolutely. And we also love the fact you can move it between clouds. So. All Thank right. You for your Thank time. you. All right, so let's, uh, let's get into a little bit more detail about the technology um, and help you understand some of the, the specifics of what we're actually doing here. Um, I'm going to start off and, uh, and just walk through the stack. And, uh, and the logical place to start again is, is compute. Um, you've already seen the virtual machines. Uh, these are KVM-based machines. Uh, so we're running on uh, the, uh, the KVM hypervisor, and we've worked pretty closely with uh, Red Hat for quite a while uh, to get to a point where we have a very secure, highly performant, high consistency environment uh, to host these, uh, these, these classes of virtual machines. We really appreciate the, uh, the leadership that, um, that Red Hat has uh, shown in the space and we'll continue to work with them in the future. Um, these virtual machines are available in multiple sizes. So you can get them in one, two, four, and eight cores. And they come with 3.75 gigabytes of RAM per core. So these are pretty beefy virtual machines. Uh, our smallest virtual machines is actually quite a lot bigger than the smallest virtual machines you'll see elsewhere. So that's something to think about um, as you actually look at what we're doing. And that makes sense here because what we're really focused on is delivering high-performance high computing, like lots of compute power that you can access and tap into uh, just because of these, these data center characteristics. Um, and uh, we offer two versions of Linux. Uh, we have Ubuntu and CentOS out of the, out of the gate. Uh, but you can actually take uh, whatever you want in, in any Linux-based uh, uh, image and create bootable images and, and run what you want to uh, in this environment. Storage. Um, I mentioned this earlier, and we have a variety of storage capabilities to meet different needs. Uh, two block devices that enable you to run familiar workloads that require uh, a block device to, to support them. The first is persistent disk, our off-instance, durably replicated storage medium. This is a very high consistency, high throughput solution that enables you to store data securely that lives beyond the life of your virtual machine instance. So this is the place where you would want to write uh, stuff like if you wanted to run a, a database, for example, this would be a great backing store for a database. Uh, we also provide a kind of cheap and cheerful local disk option. Uh, we recognize that our focus workloads are very data centric, so it makes sense to have access to a lot of uh, affordable storage that's coupled to your virtual machines to store uh, data that you're processing as a, as, a, as a cache. This data is bound to the life cycle of your virtual machine. So if you stop your virtual machine, this data is permanently gone because we encrypt it at rest, and that key is only ever stored in the virtual machine. So when the virtual machine goes away, that data goes away. That's something to consider as you're building solutions on this technology, is, is definitely, uh, pr you know, if you have something you want to store beyond the life cycle of the virtual machine, persistent disk is the way to go. And then there's Google Cloud Storage. Uh, Google Cloud Storage is our enterprise-grade internet object store. So this is the place you can go to to write objects that need to be accessible by the internet. It has some really interesting characteristics. I'll, I'll pick on two of them, but it's a, it's a pretty interesting service. The first characteristic is that it benefits from our global high-performance network backbone. So it almost comes with a CDN baked in. So the content that you want to access will be replicated to the place we need it and will be accessible very quickly. And we invite our customers to try this out. We think the performance characteristics are really good. The other thing that it offers is read your write consistency which is an interesting characteristic when you're trying to build a system at scale. It's nice to have an object store that you can write content to with, the, with that level of predictability. Um, and we found it very useful as we've developed our own solutions uh, in this space. Network, 
Um, our network really shines. It's, it's one of the things that I think uh, truly distinguishes the service. Our private network enables you to fuse these virtual machines together very efficiently, um, and it offers tremendous uh, network cross-sectional bandwidth. And we really invite our early customers to try this out. We think this is gonna be something that's very distinct about the service. And we'll have a demo in a little bit that kind of showcases uh, some of these uh, interesting performance characteristics in, 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 this, in this cloud. And then obviously, no virtual machine stands alone. So the ability to assign a static IP address to the machine that you can maintain for a long time. And these IP addresses are actually global. You can remap that IP address to another machine uh, you know, in, in another region that's, that's geographically isolated, and Google's network will just take care of making sure that the traffic gets to the right location. And then obviously, uh, firewalls. You have to be able to secure your virtual machines. You wanna be able to control who can access them. So have a very simple, intuitive firewall setup enables you to very specifically control who talks to what in the system. And tooling. Um, Chris demonstrated our tools briefly, and uh, he showed you the little UI tool that we developed, and we think that's a, an interesting metaphor for us. It, it really shows and demonstrates our commitment to openness. By all means, we're gonna make that, that, so, that so, source code available. It runs an app engine. We think app engine is a great environment to write this class of management tool to control clusters and to get a view over the clusters. So the fusion of those two technologies together is actually pretty powerful. And then uh, we have, you know, for the, for the command line and client, we have a, a very nice little uh, command line tool that provides and exposes the full flexibility of API. And then of course we have our partners. Um, our partners are contributing tremendously to our tooling story. Uh, they've enabled us to really focus on getting the infrastructure right, knowing that folks that need a best of breed management story, management story have some place to go. And with that, I'd like to invite our friends from MAPR on stage uh, to do a little demo. And they're gonna show, uh, you know, as I mentioned, it's this true. service is really about execution at scale and experiencing the power and efficiency of Google's data centers to solve some large problems. And they have some really interesting technology to do just that. All right, thanks, Craig, and uh, thanks to uh, Google for inviting us to be up here today. Uh, I'm John Schroeder, I'm the CEO and uh, co-founder of MapR Technologies, and uh, MC Srivas is uh, the chief technology officer and founded the company uh, with me a little over three years ago, and actually uh, Srivas is an ex-Googler as well, so um, let's see, how do I advance this? Um, So uh, before I get into MapR, I, I thought I'd give some of our impressions of the Google Compute Engine. And uh, when we first got access to Google Compute Engine, the engineers came to me the same day and said, you know, John, this is blazing fast. Uh, performance is really important to MapR, and uh, we can tell it's also important to Google uh, a Compute Engine. And uh, we, we drive a lot of, uh, with our platform, we're able to drive a lot of bandwidth to disk and really drive network bandwidth as well. And we're impressed with the performance there. And then uh, our technology runs on large clusters of computers. And uh, we put a lot of effort into building out our own QA lab internally to do testing, very large deployments in uh, our customer base as well. But with uh, Google Compute Engine, we could quickly spin up 1,000, 1,200, 1,600 servers in a matter of minutes and, and run those types of uh, scalable applications. And then finally, I got a glimpse at the pricing uh, over the last few days. And it's uh, very compelling. Uh, I think that it really uh, changes the game and you know, any organization that's looking to move some or all of their on-premise computing into the cloud really should take a hard look at uh, Google Compute Engine. So we're gonna use MapR to demonstrate, um, there you go. We're gonna use MapR to demonstrate uh, some of the speed and scale of Google Compute Engine. So let me tell you a little bit about MapR. We're, a provider of an open enterprise grade Hadoop distribution. So we really take uh, Hadoop and really have transformed it into a very uh, reliable compute platform and dependable data store. We've done a lot of standards based extensions to Hadoop to really broaden the use cases that it's appropriate for. Uh, we've got uh, deployments at thousands of companies, uh, customers in uh, most of the major uh, vertical market segments, including financial services, a lot of Web 2.0, uh, telco, federal government, uh, aerospace and such. Um, if you don't know what Hadoop is, probably most of you do, it's pretty popular, but it's a big data analytics platform. So it's a, 
a platform for being able to run analytics, analytics at a very large scale, you know, petabytes or even 100 petabytes of data, and that data may be structured or, or semi-structured. It runs on, uh, generally on commodity hardware and large clusters of computers. And uh, in, since we're at a Google conference, we want to make sure that we also identify that uh, really the whole Hadoop project was inspired by a paper about MapReduce that was published by a couple of uh, Google scientists back in 2004, uh, Jeffrey Dean and Sanjay. And we're really happy to have the uh, MapR now running as part of the uh, Google Compute Engine. So a few days ago, um, Craig said, you know, could you put together a, a demo that would show some of the uh, capabilities that Google, Google Compute Engine also allow you to, you know, show your product a bit too. So Srivas and I talked, and he said, well, why don't we just run a big sort? And uh, TerraSort is, is a standard benchmark that's run to measure performance of, of applications, and it's a very popular benchmark for uh, demonstrating the uh, performance of Hadoop distributions. So we stitched together uh, uh, quickly a 1,250-node cluster and ran a TerraSort, and I, I think we'll do a demo of that right now and Srivas can walk you through how that worked. So uh, what we have here is, uh, you know, this green, uh, each of these green squares represents a node in the Google Compute Cluster. So we have a full cluster of about uh, 1,250 uh, nodes with five co control nodes. And this is the heat map that we have, which uh, kind of sh lets you look at the cluster as, you know, from one console and see it, uh, you know, put different views on it. And one of the views we're putting on out here will be, you know, how does the system, uh, you know, the, the, the CPU load on the system when we run, when we run a TerraSort. And of course, if it, you know, it, it turns from green to red and back again. On the, on the other side is the actual TerraSort benchmark that we, you know, which we, it's just a command line that shows uh, the, the elapsed time as it runs. Uh, so what's very impressive about this was, uh, let me start this up. So here we are we're launching a TerraSort. And as you can see, uh, it kind of fans out the work to all the, all the nodes very fast. The Google Compute Network was incredibly efficient. We could just go and uh, load up the clusters almost instantly. A TerraSort runs within a minute. And so you have to go and load up about uh, several thousands of computers almost instantly with, with data. And then have them all do a crisscross section of the data going across. And then you can see how every node there's no nodes that are green. Every node is lit up well. And what it shows is the cross-cluster bandwidth of thousands of machines talking to each other completely in a, in a complete crossbar, working really well. And now, uh, so this was kind of an interesting benchmark because uh, if, you, if you had told me this three months ago, hey, do this benchmark on a cloud, I would have said, ah, you know, I mean, this, you, you can never do this. And when we, when, we, you know, when we were invited to work on Google Compute Engine, we were just blown away by its performance, its scale, how easy it was to deploy. And we, really th we literally thought of this last week doing this. And to pull this off in a week, uh, we could not have done without the ease, the simplicity, and the reliability, and the consistent performance of Google Compute. It's just incredible. So um, the Silvell is still finishing. Usually the, the problem is the last stragglers take a long time. So this, this took about a minute, uh, I think 80 seconds, a minute and 20 seconds, and it's probably, uh, I'll, I'll hand this off to John to talk about what, what's the impact of this. Yeah, switch? so if you... Uh, How do you switch this one? You need to switch over. Thank you. Okay, so um, if you look at running TerraSort, um, the fastest TerraSort I'd seen recorded uh, on physical hardware is uh, described in the, the middle column there. And it, uh, it was deployed on 1,460 physical servers running on bare metal Linux uh, uh, with a high number of disks, uh, 5,800 disks, and almost 12,000 cores. And that's a record that uh, took a long time for a company to put together in their own internal data center to run. Here in a, in a really short period of time, in a virtual environment running on uh, fewer servers, 1,256 servers, uh, one disk per, per server, and about 5,000 cores. We're right in the neighborhood with that. So I'd, uh, I'd love to come back here next year and maybe raise the bar and do a, a, a petabyte benchmark instead. 
Um, but a, a, a really great performance. And you know, on on-premise Hadoop implementations, they rarely run in virtualized environments uh, because of the performance overhead. So it's also another um, indication of the performance of the Google Compute Engine. Oh, good. Now, if you look at putting this together, those two benchmarks, if you tried to assemble 1,460 servers in your data center, it'd take you months. I mean, I'd be, I'd be negotiating with my server vendor probably for months, and then I'd have to rack and stack uh, you know, 50 to 70 uh, racks of servers, switching our infrastructure, uh, get the electrical brought into the data center to handle that server load, um, probably 50 to 75 tons of air conditioning. So it's a massive project that it'd take just months to do, and uh, with the Google Compute Engine, we're basically up and running on over 1,200 instances in a matter of minutes. So the, the time to deploy is, is very, very fast. And then, if you notice, we're not paying for that anymore now either. Uh, once we're done running the TerraSort, we give those resources back to, uh, to Google, uh, where with the physical servers, they'd be mine. And three to five years from now, I'd have to swap all those servers out for newer models. And we leave all that to uh, uh, Google as the cloud provider as well. And from a cost perspective, um, just to take a really, really, <laughs> just a very conservative run, if I just allocate 4,000 a server, which is probably, you know, uh, 50% lower than what most Hadoop servers go for, and this doesn't count racks, PDUs, switching infrastructure, ongoing OpEx, yeah, $6 million, you know, a minute 20 of instance time, 16 bucks, so a, a tremendous cost advantage. Um, finally, we are uh, part of the, the uh, private beta, if you'd like to try running uh, MapR Hadoop on Google Compute Engine, really simple uh, URL to remember, mapr.com slash Google. So thanks much for your time. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. That's a great demo. And I'm definitely looking forward to uh, having you come back and uh, do some more interesting stuff with, the, uh, with our data centers. And this is really early days for us. You know, this is the this is the first offering of the service. It's just going to keep getting better. Uh, we're going to bring more and more of the awesome infrastructure, the awesome infrastructure technologies of Google to you, so that you can benefit from them and benefit from the efficiencies. So John already talked about this a little bit. Um, you know, a big part of our commitment with the service is to transfer the efficiencies we benefit to you, and we believe this is reflected in our price sheet. Um, if you take a look at this price sheet, it may not be obvious, but when you look at this compared to what other uh, cloud providers are offering, you get up to 50% more compute for your money. And we really invite you to, to get on board, try this out, and take a look at it. Um, that, that standard, that one, is not a small instance. There's a, there's a whole bunch of compute power in that thing. So we definitely want you to take a look at it, take them for a spin, uh, and see, uh, see if, you, if, you, if you experience the same kind of benefits that, that we've seen when running our processes uh, on these things. And with that, I, uh, I do thank you for your time. Um, and I invite you to join our limited preview program. Um, we're available now, um, and I expect there'll be a fair amount of demand because uh, access to the program comes with a pretty generous quote of, of free compute. Uh, and so you can, you know, th th we, while we have very, very big data centers, we do have uh, you know, finite spots in our compute program. So we, we beg your patience uh, and, and do apply, and we'll, we'll try to service everyone who wants to participate in this program. Um, for folks that reach the end and really like the service, it will be available commercially, and we will be offering an SLA, and we will be offering support uh, to our commercial customers. So you can absolutely contact our sales team. Uh, they'd be delighted to, to uh, speak to you about the service, tell you a little bit more about it, and tell you about how to get into this program. And uh, so go ahead and, and do apply for access, and, um, and we, uh, you know, we invite you to come to some of our other sessions. If you want to learn more about Google Compute Engine, you want to get into some of the details, uh, Joe Bader, who's the uh, technical lead, one of the, the sort of original architect on the project, will be delivering a session called 313 at 5.30 this afternoon. And then tomorrow we'll have another session, 308, which will really clarify the relationship between Google Compute Engine and Google App Engine and help you understand how to build very powerful systems that bring together the best of platform as a service, 
and infrastructure as a service uh, in the Google Cloud Platform. And with that, I'd like to invite uh, my colleagues on stage. We'll do a little Q&A. I think we have uh, about 10 minutes. So uh, if you have questions, please uh, let us know. It's obvious that it does scale very quickly. Yes. But what about certain applications that need 32 cores? You know, on one machine. So uh, yes, it does scale quickly. Right now, we offer instance sizes up to eight cores. Uh, we're absolutely looking at uh, ways to bring even more of our infrastructure capabilities to market. But that's just where we started. So right now, it's really about lots of uh, work that can be paralyzed. Uh, we will provide vertical scaling in the future. OK, thank you. Sure. Uh, so when MapR showed their cost calculation of $16, they actually broke it down by second? Yes. So are you going to be billing at seconds, minutes, uh, or to the hour? It's a, it's a great point. At this point, it's by the hour. So what they really should have said is you could have broken this, you could have done this 60 times in a row for, you know, for this. Um, you know, right now, it is, it is on demand by the hour, but uh, it's definitely something we're thinking about. OK, thanks. My question is about how it plays well with Google App Engine, specifically on the areas of load balancer. So once I've authenticated with Google App Engine, will it work uh, with the same authentication? The second being how, how it works with MapReduce. Sorry, Memcache. OK. So, um, so obviously, we have two technologies, uh, Google App Engine, Google Compute Engine. We're going to be doing a session tomorrow. We'll get into much more of the details, but I'll provide you a very you know, sort of brief sense of where we are. Coming out of the gate, Google Compute Engine is about being able to deploy a lot of servers to solve some computationally hard problems. Um, App Engine is our sort of web-facing, high productivity, high efficiency environment uh, for application development. Um, the two together actually work pretty well. Uh, we have the ability to flow uh, credentials using OAuth, so that you can use service accounts to authenticate across them. And App Engine becomes a very natural orchestrator and management framework for these, these compute uh, containers. And the compute offers the ability to open App Engine up and run general workloads that can connect as part of your App Engine application. Now, over time, we will work to create even richer connectivity between the two services. For now, it works very naturally. And a great example of that is our, is our UI. That was an App Engine application. That was an App Engine application that was just spinning up these virtual machines. So App Engine's a very natural way to do things like auto scaling and, uh, and to deal with some of those, the, the, those constituent parts. And it'll just get better with time. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Hi, are the uh, data centers located internationally? And if so, can I uh, specify a failover site? Um, so at this point, we only have domestic uh, data centers, US data centers. We are working on creating a, a global data center footprint. Uh, even within the US, can I specify a failover site in East Coast uh, you or West can, Coast? Yeah, you can pick. Uh, we actually publish what uh, region and, and, uh, they're in. And so you can pick which specific data center you want to be deployed in so that you can be close to your customers. We're launching initially with three data center locations that are central and east coast, which works well for this class of workload. And we're looking at bringing on more as, as the service uh, matures and as we, as we bring more capabilities to market. OK, thank you. Okay. Hi. Um, how I, I saw in the flow diagram that there were connections to the outside world from the VMs, but I didn't mm -hmm. see anywhere in the API console when he flipped through that showed like IP address allocation or anything like that. Is there? Oh, yeah. <coughs> so um, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I, I'm going to be talking about that a lot more in my session at 5.15, not 5.30. And oh, it was 5.15, sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, we, do, we do provide uh, public IP addresses, IPv4 addresses that are mapped one-to-one -to, -one to instances. Um, and, uh, and you can either have those be uh, statically allocated and attached to you know, your project, or you can have those be ephemeral, and they come and go with that particular instance. How do we, how do we sign up? <laughs> uh, go to cloud.google.com, <laughs> press the button, do it quick. <laughs> Yeah, and okay. I think I just want to drive home the point that these things, these these IP addresses are actually um, global across our service, so they can float from region to region, which you think is a, you know, especially going towards the uh, disaster recovery or failover, it's an important feature for that. Alrighty. Next By question. what time do you expect that a small business can rent out, like let's say ten, so around ten servers of like me medium-sized servers? More locations. Uh, so we're in limited preview right now. Um, you know, folks that have workloads that we think will really benefit from the scale and efficiency of the data centers, uh, we will take on board and we'll take on as commercial customers. Based on our experiences with the limited preview program, as we grow this up, uh, we will decide when to make the product generally available. 
So our aspiration is to make it available soon, but we want to create a great experience for all our customers, and we think that the best experience will be with these large-scale workloads right now. But is it probable that by the next Google I.O., um, I'm not going to make any statements about our futures. <laughs> I'm sorry. But. Good try. Can you touch on uh, how you would upload a lot of data, what tools are available, uh, if it's GSUtil based or FTP, or if you have a lot of data you want to move up to disk, how, all, how that whole process works? Yeah, so, um, so as, as you've heard, um, you know, all of our services interact on, on, the, on the, the Google global network. So we have pretty high capacity pipes to Google storage. And from the virtual machine, you're actually able to get OAuth credentials seamlessly. Um, our version of GSUtil, for instance, um, seamlessly will just reach into our metadata server, grab some OAuth credentials, and then enable you to grab content from Google Storage very quickly. Um, so it's a very easy way to, to deal with this. It also means you don't have to deal with um, pushing keys into your virtual machine images and manage them. Uh, so that's, that, that, we think, is a great experience. And then, you know, again, it's, it's on the Google network. We, we have some pretty interesting network right, technology. Right, but getting data from before it's on the Google network. So yeah, if so you, uh, if you can get to the Google network, awesome things happen. <laughs> yeah. So for uh, many high-performance computing jobs, uh, they, they utilize a heterogeneous compute environment that includes GPUs as well as traditional CPUs. Does Google have any plans for a heterogeneous compute product? Um, I mean, obviously, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of workloads that benefit from uh, GPU acceleration. We don't yet have an offering, and I can't really talk about um, our GPU futures at this point. Uh, but we do recognize the, the value proposition of that. Great. Thanks. Thank you. I was going to ask a GPU question as well. OK, um, so pick it up one. No, how many, what's the maximum number of cores in, a, in the largest instance? Uh, the maximum number of cores in the largest instance is eight. Um, and, and those are pretty beefy cores. So you actually get quite a lot of compute power for that. Um, we're looking at, uh, we'll, we'll look at vertical scalability and providing bigger options in time, but we figured that's a really good place to start. Uh, sometimes with a continuous delivery, uh, we need to spin up rapidly a large number of servers all at once. Um, do you guys have any kind of limits or uh, delays in large requests? Um, what, 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 what do you believe is large? What is the? Um, <laughs> say uh, 50, 100. Uh, yeah, no, that's not. I mean, it, 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 that, is a, that is a lot of servers, but it's not, uh, it's yeah. not that many servers. Uh, like, what is your limits around some kind of um, Well, we, we tend to think in the tens of thousands uh, right. at this point. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the, the API itself is currently limited to about 20 QPS uh, in our initial offering. Per, per, uh, per project. Per project. Yeah. Um, not, 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 not total. Not total. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, and, uh, and then we'll be spinning that up uh, as the the uh, service matures. We're also going to look at um, uh, improving the APIs to do more operations and batches. Um, so you could make a single request for you know, n, n instances or n disks. So it's good and it'll get better. Yeah. Yep. OK, so, so for application server, so we may have the internal load balancer. Do, do you provide that? So different. Uh, yeah, so, so for, the, uh, for applications, are you, you're looking at a sort of um, elastic load balancing capability? Yeah, load balancer for internal. So internal one cluster, say, call talk to another cluster, but it's on the internal access. Well, sure. um, you know, that's, that's not something that we're offering right out of the gate, but it's definitely an architectural pattern that we've seen. Um, and that's, it, it mirrors a lot of what we do internally at Google also, where you'll have different tiers of your application um, yeah. using load balancing technologies. And, you know, and we're going we're gonna to keep looking to see how we can apply Google's, Google's experience, not just at the, at the hardware level, but also at the software and distributed system level to start solving problems like that. OK, thanks. Thank you. Uh, you guys have mentioned a lot about your network. Um, what kind of between instance latency do you have compared to, say, EC2? Um, so it's a great question. Uh, we are very proud of our network uh, capabilities, and it will continue to get even more awesome with time. Uh, we don't like to uh, publish you know, comparative uh, performance numbers. We invite you to apply for the program, try it out. Uh, we think you'll like it. Uh, we think you'll like it particularly when you try to build large clusters yeah. and you want to see very strong, uh, you know, consistent cross-sectional bandwidth across large clusters. Will the App Engine team ever be developing on top of the Compute Engine? So provisioning for App Engine, using yeah. the Compute Engine. So, so the question is, App Engine, uh, will they be building on top of uh, Compute Engine? Yeah. Um, right, so at this time, um, the two technologies work well together, and we've ensured a, a, a good degree of integration. But they are discrete products. I mean, Google Compute Engine is, is, is pure infrastructure, and it benefits tremendously from having that platform as a service component. Over time, I expect you'll see the lines become more blurred. Um, and and we're, we're working on creating a much more natural fusion of the technologies. 
for now, the, the best applications are, for instance, using App Engine as a way to build and scale and manage large-scale applications and serve as a front end for the large-scale compute clusters, and then using Compute Engine to um, open up App Engine and, and run you know, proprietary code, for instance, like a transcoding application, et cetera. And over time, I think you'll find them, you know, I, I, well, we're working on making them much more aligned. Thank you. IPv6. Yes. <laughs> what are your plans for offering it? We, 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 are, we are going to do IPv6. Um, you know, we, we had to prioritize what's important to people now, right now, um, as, as we uh, work to get the product uh, uh, ready for Google I.O. But um, Google uh, is a very big proponent of IPv6, and I can guarantee you that there are many people inside of Google who would love to see us have IPv6 yesterday. So yeah, it's a, it's a priority for us. Absolutely. All right, any other questions? Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time. And, uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, and, and do visit us in the later sessions. Uh, Joe's session at 5.15.